Hello again. So, once again, in my new kitchen. Ah, so happy. So, since I'm in the process of unpacking many, many boxes a day and trying to set up this apartment and not having all my furniture and blah, 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 blah. I don't have all my new kitchen stuff that I need to cook. So, I'm, ta I'm doing some takeout right now. I do have like protein bars and yogurt and granola and I got some fruit and stuff that I can eat without having to cook, but I'm, I'm gonna start cooking like salads and that kind of a thing that I can manage in the next few days for lunch and stuff especially, but for dinners, I did a thing. And one of my favorite vegan restaurants in New York I mean, I have so many favorites, but one of my favorites is a restaurant called Beyond Sushi. And originally when I first went to them, it was just all, you know, vegan sushi, bomb desserts, that kind of a thing. But they've really branched out into all of this other stuff now. They had like a pasta month in November of last year where they had all of these pasta dishes that were really good. And they have Mediterranean food now. They have impossible sliders and kebabs and all this stuff. And for COVID, they came out with this catering delivery service type thing where you can buy meals that are single serve. And they have a bunch of really, really good sounding meals. And I was just reading through it when I was in my isolation in Massachusetts, not eating any takeout food ever, being like, you know what? I miss Beyond Sushi so much. And I haven't spent any money on takeout food. So I may as well get like a week of dinners from Beyond Sushi. And they're all single serve, which is super easy for me because most places right now when they're doing like big week deliveries or whatever, it's for families and or houses of two at the very least. And I'm a house of one. And I don't like having the same thing every day. I, I can do it once in a while, but I, I like food too much to have the same thing every day. I just need to try new things. So the fact that I could get six different meals sounds pretty great to me. So that's what I did. The one thing I'm a little bummed about is I um, had ordered their smoked kale ravioli and they emailed me a few days ago and they were like, we're out of that, but I'm getting some impossible kefta kebabs instead that come with caramelized onions and this quinoa salad. It looks very healthy and very good. I was a little worried because I'm having three things now that have impossible meat in them and as much as I love Impossible Meat, it does have a lot of protein. It is a little bit on the more like preservative side and I do bloat a lot from all the sodium in it, but nobody but me is seeing me in my apartment right now. So who gives a fuck if I'm bloated from Impossible Meat? I don't. So I have a bunch of very cool things coming today and I will show you each meal that I get as I eat them throughout the week, I will try them, I will rate them, and it should be a fun time. So, hell yeah, Beyond Sushi, hell yeah, being back in New York for food delivery. I'll see you later today when my order gets delivered. It's here, it's arrived, it's been delivered. Ah! So I'm just going to clean these containers with some wipes and then put them all in the fridge. Knowing me, I'll probably put them in the fridge in the order that I'm going to eat them. So each meal comes with a mandatory, like carb side kind of. So with each meal, you got to choose if you wanted their rosemary focaccia bread, which is so good, uh, pita bread or taro chips. And they all sounded very good but I only got one rosemary focaccia because I know that with the, the other ones are easier to eat things with. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Basically, those things I'm not going to be eating for you guys because I'm not going to be eating them with dinners. I'm going to be eating them with like lunches over the next few weeks because the taro chips will last a while. But I got two things of pita bread because that's so, yeah, you can make so many meals with that, you know? Um, Two things of taro chips, snacks, can have as like with dip and all that fun stuff. And then one thing of the rosemary focaccia, which is very good and I already know what I'm going to eat it with. And once I'm done getting through all of this food, I'm basically going to freeze it and I'm going to bake it. 
And once I get through all this food, I'm going to eat the rosemary focaccia with some ratatouille. I know what I'm doing. The holy grail is their giant rosemary focaccia, which we love. I'm going to, I'll show you what the containers look like just so you can kind of get an idea of what each meal kind of looks like. So they're nicely sized, as you can see in retrospect to my head. And so it basically comes with one like main dish and then two sides. Some things, like if I had gotten the ravioli that I originally ordered, it would have just been one thing. But yeah, they each come in containers like this, single serve little meals. I'm gonna clean these off, put them in the fridge, and I'll show you what my fridge looks like. My fridge is screaming at me, but there they are. Yay! So I got these new plates that are really cute for anthropology. It's dirty right now. And I thought they were microwave safe, uh, but I put it in the microwave and I saw sparks, so I immediately took it out. I'm still gonna eat my dinner on this plate because I love it and it's big and it's fitting everything, but I'm just microwaving it in the microwave safe container right now, which I literally never do, but I, I, I just, just kind of freaked me out. So microwaving that for a few minutes. Once it's out, we'll put it on the plate, do a little taste test. Not gonna lie to you, I already took a little bite of some cold garlic mashed potatoes and a little bit of this uh, sauce. Yo, so good. Uh, in case you didn't, I didn't tell you, which I didn't, so it's not in case, I literally didn't tell you. This dinner, the one that we're having tonight, is a lemon seitan piccata with garlic mashed potatoes and peas. So good! So excited! It's gonna be so yummy. I tried the piccata sauce a little bit, the mashed potatoes were great cold, so I'm sure they'll be great warm. And I'm picky with mashed potatoes, I don't like most mashed potatoes, so that's saying a lot. Anyways, warming that up. I will be back in a second when I finally get to eat that because that's not exploding and that was sparking. Jesus. There she is. So we have the seitan lemon piccata, our peas, and our garlic mashed potatoes. Hey, so the footage of me trying the peas and the mashed potatoes went missing. Well, my, my camera just like stopped filming and deleted the footage. You can see, you'll, you'll see my face reacting to it in the next clip. But uh, the peas were kind of dry. I blame my microwave, but could be Beyond Sushi's fault. Who knows? So they were fine, but those mashed potatoes, let me tell you, I am picky with mashed potatoes. Do not like most mashed potatoes. Sue me. I know people love mashed potatoes. They're just not, I'm picky with potatoes. It's, fa it's a fact, and most mashed potatoes just aren't good. But these were chock full of chives and garlic and caramelized onion. And they're probably some of the best mashed potatoes I've had in a very long time. So those mashed potatoes were like a 12 out of 10. Anyways, let's continue the video. I don't know why my camera just like stopped filming, but it did, so thanks for that. We're gonna try some seitan with some sauce. Here we go. What the fuck? Yo. Okay. Aftertaste is like burnt meat and seitan. First bite is like amazing lemon piccata sauce and then pure chicken fat. I know that sounds crazy and it could sound gross to some people, but that is so good. Holy cow. Mmm. Beyond sushi. I don't know where you get your seitan. They probably make it themselves, honestly. That bite was way more seitan-y, but I'm, I, I like seitan, so I don't mind. This is so good. Oh, okay. I'm going to go enjoy this, and I will see you guys tomorrow night with our next dinner. It's another Beyond Sushi dinner night. I just finished warming my thing up in the oven. It's not the oven. That's the microwave. In the microwave, and I'm going to plate it up and make it look all pretty. Uh, I'm already in pajamas, but I decided I would wait till that was done this time instead of having it be running while I spoke to you because I did that once and it didn't didn't work out so yeah well, well, that was gross I didn't like that uh, I'll show that to you once I played it oh tonight's dinner is an impossible meatloaf with I'm pretty sure grilled onion and mushrooms and farro and I love farro oof can't wait 
here we go. All right, this plate's like a little deeper, so it doesn't help with this pretty spread outness that I wish I could. But here we have a bunch of beautifully grilled mushrooms, and then there's mushrooms that are on top of the meatloaf. This is the meatloaf. I'm trying to see if maybe I can show you a little better. Let's see, impossible meatloaf. There she is. And there's all of our beautiful faro. Let's get to tasting. Okay. Let's let's get to tasting, shall we? I'm going to try. Start start off easy. I'm just gonna have a mushroom, just one of the side mushrooms. A oh, very good mushroom. Kind of like the peas, you know? It's, it's a mushroom. It's good. I'm gonna have some farro, which I feel like again is just gonna taste like farro, but I love farro. So. Mm-hmm. And it's well cooked too. It's got bite to it. It's what I like. Okay. Now I'm gonna try one of the mushrooms that has like the meatloafy sauce on it. Mmm, okay. It's kinda like red winey, I like that. Now this is a piece of the meatloaf. Maybe I should do it without the mushroom. Piece of meatloaf by itself. Ooh. They really know how to like season and mess with their impossible meat to make it taste so good. It's kind of like a red winey sauce with the mushrooms, but the meatloaf itself doesn't really taste like shitty meatloaf because like when I imagine meatloaf, I just imagine like the taste of beef and ketchup. This is like elevated. It tastes like red wine mushroom sauce and charred hamburger meat. <laughs> Let me take one more bite, see if I can... Yeah. That, ta that, that tastes better than Impossible Meat. I don't know how Beyond Sushi manages to do that, but they do. And God bless them for it. So good. This whole meal, I feel like, is probably going to be a 10 out of 10 again as well. I'm going to go eat it for dinner, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Hello, hello, hello. It is dinner time. Tonight's meal is what was supposed to be the smoked kale ravioli that they ran out of, which is fine. I'm not complaining. Um, when they emailed me to tell me that the ravioli wasn't a thing anymore, they were like, but I recommend either getting this thing or this thing. And can't remember, oh, it was either the Impossible Spaghetti and Meatballs, which I'm really picky with spaghetti and meatballs, and I usually don't really like it. So I went with the other thing, which is kefta kebabs. So dinner tonight, is some impossible kefta kebabs with grilled onion, quinoa salad. It looks more just like quinoa with a little bit of parsley in it, but I love parsley, so good with that. And roasted broccoli. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to warm that up in the microwave real quick, put it on a plate, show it to you, and then we'll get to tasting. All right, here she is. They're very generous with the quinoa. It's like a tri-color quinoa. There's a little bit of parsley in it. Broccoli's very hot. It just looks like plain steamed broccoli, so I feel like that's what it's going to taste like. And these are our three beautiful kefta kebabs that have spices on them and beautifully caramelized onions. So let's get to trying. All right, let's start with the quinoa since there's a lot of that. Let's see what we think of her. Oh, wow, that got everywhere. I think I'm going to need a spoon. <laughs> Solid quinoa. Tastes like quinoa and a little bit of olive oil. I think, because I had a bite of the cold one literally a second ago and it was a lot softer, I think, since I had it in the microwave for so long to make sure that this was hot, it um, cooked the quinoa more. So it's got a bit more of a bite to it now, but I don't mind. I No textures really bother me. If a texture ever bothers me, that's how you know it's bad because I can handle basically everything when it comes to texture. Just picking up these little quinoa pieces that went flying. We're gonna be quickly, Mr. Quinoa. Let's try a piece of this broccoli, shall we? Um, I have a feeling it's just gonna taste like broccoli, kind of like the peas and the mushrooms have the past two days, where it just tastes like vegetable. Not much else, but okay, this isn't cutting, so we're just gonna. Do we take a huge bite of? No, we're not gonna take a gigantic bite of broccoli. We're just gonna take a regular person bite of broccoli. Okay, broccoli, very warm. Mmm, mmm. It's good because it's cooked perfectly. It's soft, but there is a bite to it. It's like al dente broccoli. Um, 
and there's garlic on it. So, garlic and broccoli. So solid. All right, now let's try a kefta kebab with a little bit of caramelized onion because they're meant to be eaten together. Shall we, shall we? I think we shall. Whoa. That somehow tastes like cinnamon meat. And I know that sounds disgusting, but I mean that in a really good way. I don't know if it's because of the onions. Let's let's try an onion by itself. It's like, yeah, oh, that's a sweet caramelized onion. Oof, so good. Okay, and then now I'm gonna try just a piece of the kefta without onion. There's some like cinnamon flavor in that kebab, but I love it. Ooh, this is good. Okay, 10 out of 10 for the kebabs and the onions, 10 out of 10 for the broccoli. Uh, 8 out of 10 for the quinoa because I overcooked it and made it not great. Um, that's it for me. Mmm. Damn. Damn. What is up, my dudes? It's the second to last night of our Beyond Sushi dinners, which is sad, but it's not the last night, so... We're eating more impossible meat. Wow, um, I haven't put it in the microwave yet, but I'll tell you what we're having tonight since I'm going to heat it up soon. Tonight's meal is a stuffed artichoke, which is stuffed with, I'm pretty sure, impossible meat. Like, literally 99% sure that it's impossible meat. So it's a stuffed artichoke with a side of celery root puree. Fancy, right? Not mashed potatoes, celery root puree. And, oh, my Wi-Fi's back. Uh, <laughs> I was just checking because I can't remember what the other thing was. Squash, green squash. Oh, that's exciting, I love squash. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in the microwave. I'm gonna put it on a plate. We're using another new plate tonight. Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I've been using a different plate every night, and that's because I decided that instead of being an adult who has uh, all the same plates in her apartment, I would just get a bunch of different pretty plates and just pick whichever one I like the best that day or that I think matches my food, because that's more fun to me. Anyways, this one's like a metal one, so I don't think it can go in the microwave, so I'm not even gonna try it, but it's pretty. It's like, I mean, when I saw it online, it didn't, it wasn't this exact one, because it's like a watercolor type deal marble swirl, so I think they're all different. I could be wrong. So this one's a little funky looking, but it kind of looks like an airplane, maybe, Ooh, or like a betta fish. It's in the microwave now, so sorry if it's loud, but I'm guessing they were out of squash, which is fine. It's a little sad because I love squash, but, you know, I dealt with the smoked kale ravioli and that turned out really well. So I can deal with not having squash. They gave me more broccoli instead, but if it's as good as that garlic broccoli that I had last night, was it last night? I hope, I think it was last night. Last night or the night before or the night before that. It wasn't a... I'm pretty sure it was last night. Okay. Um, if it's as good as the garlic broccoli that I had last night, then I'm happy. Because that was really good garlic broccoli. But we'll see. I guess we'll see when we taste it. I licked a little bit of the celery root puree cold off the inside of the container because I felt like it. And it tasted kind of like chicken broth. So... Hopefully when it's warm, it doesn't taste like that anymore because I don't like that. All right, there was a lot of um, like sauce left over in the compartment that had the uh, impossible artichoke. So I just poured that on top as like a sauce and I'm realizing that it's gonna get all under the plate and soak into everything, but eh, more flavor. So here we have the celery root puree, the broccoli that I see little garlic pieces in. So I think we're in luck for garlic broccoli and the stuffed artichoke. Alrighty, let's, I'm not gonna lie, I already had a little bit of the celery root puree and it does kind of taste like a vegetable soup, which I'm not the like a, the biggest fan of. It tastes like a, a vegetable soup made with chicken broth specifically and I don't, I hated chicken broth before I was vegan. Like I never liked it. Never liked chicken noodle soup unless it was from Panera Bread. 
either, so. Oh, okay, but that bite had more of like a celery kick to it. Okay, I liked that bite, what the hell? Okay, that just tasted like celery root and like white wine. So that was nice. That's a little better, okay. Let's try a bite of broccoli and see if I was right and it is garlic broccoli. Huzzah! So good! Oh! Tastes like something I'd get at like CPK or Chili's. Oh, so good. Such random places to name. All right, we're gonna try a bite of this stuffed artichoke. And I want a bite that has both the meat and the choke. Cheers. Mmm. That's super interesting. The impossible meat is kind of sweet, like the kafta kebabs, which is a little weird, but I like it. I want to try a piece of artichoke by itself. That's an artichoke. I feel like I'm pretty neutral about this whole meal. This is probably, like it's good, but it's probably my least favorite that I've had so far. I'd give this like a, I always say like, I, I'll give this like a, I need to stop doing that, it's really annoying. I would give this one maybe a 6 out of 10. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow night for our last meal. Big sad. I realized that it was not a good idea to dry my laundry when I was going to film this, the last of these videos, so hopefully you can't hear that. But it's the last night. For some reason I thought that it was six nights of food, it's only five nights. You, I could have made it six, but I, it, then it would have been more expensive. So, this is the last night. Very sad. Um, I was thinking about when I, when the smoked kale ravioli got cancelled, I was thinking about maybe having one of the impossible things on the last night so it wasn't like three days of impossible food in a row, but I'm glad I didn't do that because if I had done last night's as my last meal, I would have been very sad because I did not really like last night's. I didn't end up finishing that celery root puree. It just, it wasn't my thing. Broccoli was good though, but tonight is not impossible meat, so it'll be different. Tonight's meal is ses, is it sesame? Or it's, it's seed, that's what it is. Seed crusted tofu with a side of white rice, which will probably be amazing white rice. And what else? And fava beans. Fava beans are not the, a type of bean that I have very often. Uh, 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 <laughs> English. It's not a type of bean I have very often, but it reminds me of The Silence of the Lambs. And that is one of my favorite movies. So, yay. <laughs> Let's hope that they're good. I don't, yeah. So I'm gonna pop that in the microwave, heat it up. And I will show you it when it's done, and then we'll eat our very last Beyond Sushi meal. Some of these are actually things that are on the menu at Beyond Sushi, so if you ever go, you're like, hmm, Madison said that was good, I should try that, then you should. A lot of them aren't on the menu, but the, I know the kafta kebabs are, I would get those, and they're, they do have seitan skewers, and I've had those before, and it's, they're just as good, if not even less seitan tasting than the seitan focaccia I had, so yeah. Also, another recommendation along the same savory not beyond sushi lines that I would recommend getting there, their impossible sliders. So good. My mom is obsessed with them and she's not vegan. Um but literally all of their 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 Spanish is amazing, their cookie skillet's amazing, their sushi is amazing. I mean I love Beyond Sushi. All right, I'm gonna heat this up and be sad because this is the last meal. Not ever. I'm gonna have so much more Beyond Sushi in my life, but you know what I mean. Real quick, I don't know if it's the mixture of like the rice and the seeds or in their tofu or what, but my whole entire kitchen smells like Thai food right now in the best way. Like, it's, it literally smells like I just walked into an incredible Thai restaurant. And I'm about to have an amazing meal. Final meal, here we are. Here is our beautiful grilled sesame, I keep saying sesame, they're seeds. They're like car caraway seeds. Grilled, seeded tofu, white rice, and our fava beans. 
Okay, I'm gonna start with the thing that is the least exciting, technically, which is the white rice, because I just feel like I already know that this is gonna be good because white rice is good, unless you really, really fuck it up. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's almost like sushi rice. Love that. Sushi rice, superior rice. Not the most superior. Mm, is that? I don't know my own opinions on rice. I just know that sushi rice is like top tier. Now let's try these fava beans. They're gigantic. They're so creamy. I was going to say saucy, but they're not really saucy. There's just like a little bit of Goop, not goopiness, just creaminess on top of it. Mmm. Kind of tastes like refried beans in a good way. Like if you went to a fancy Mexican restaurant and they gave you refried beans on the side and they were like seasoned and nice. Kind of tastes like that, but with another bean in with it. Pretty good. It's a little, the bean itself is a little dry, but I'm gonna blame it on the microwave. Ooh. I just got some of the sauce from the tofu on that bite. And it was good. So, with that, let's try some tofu. Got a little bit of sauce on this. Ooh, she's like baked. She baked or grilled. She might have been both, knowing them. Here we go. What the fuck? Um, that doesn't even taste like tofu. And I like the taste of tofu, but this is so meaty. It's got a little bit of a kick to it, but it's in high bite. Ooh, and those caraway seeds. That is some of the meatiest tofu that I've ever had. And the flavor that those caraway seeds, and there are black sesame seeds, so I wasn't completely lying, but the flavor that they add to that like meaty tofu, oh my God, mmm. Okay, rice, 10 out of 10. It's like sushi rice, it's great. That tofu, 10 out of 10. Those fava beans, eight out of 10, only because I think my microwave dried them out. But other than that, at this whole meal, because of that would be like a 9 out of 10, but 10 out of 10. So good. Ooh. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go eat my dinner and I'll be back and we will do a final ranking, which will be very difficult for me, I'm sure. Hello. I'm cold, so I have a blanket around me and I just stopped crying like 20 minutes ago. So I'm doing great. <laughs> but I'm gonna film the end to this Beyond Sushi video, because cause it's over. <laughs> we need an ending and I told you that I would rank them and I kind of figured out my ranking last night so Like I said most all of these meals were incredible and I loved them all so much, but Some of them were just Better than others, I guess so obviously each meal came with three things on the plate so my t number one pick is the thing that each of those three items were prime. Because some of them, it was like one or two of the items were really good, but then one of the other ones just was fine. So the number one, top of our list, is the meatloaf with farro and mushrooms, because that meatloaf slapped, and the sauce on it did too. Farro, we love farro. Those mushrooms, great. All three of those things were incredible, and because of that, that goes on the top of our list. Then, secondly, we have the... Ooh, I'm forgetting one in my head, aren't I? I am. Anyways, secondly, I think I'm going to go for the... Sit... Or maybe on the same level, I'm going to go for the seitan piccata and the kefta kebabs, because with both of those, the meat, so the kefta and the seitan, were really good. And then the peas with the seitan were fine, they were just dry peas, but the mashed potatoes, so good. And with the kefta kebabs, the broccoli was great and the quinoa was just like, whatever. So those come in second. Maybe mashed potatoes and then 
kefta. <laughs> so like the kefta meat was better than the seitan, but the mashed potatoes were better than both of those sides. But the seitan was still really good. So those were second. Th that means that third would be the tofu dish that I had last night, but again, like, it's so, so good. So I would almost put that, all of these are number ones, in my opinion. This is just sorting the number ones based on which plate was, had the most good stuff. So for last night, those fava beans were a bit dry, so I wasn't, like, super digging them, but the tofu was super good, and that rice tasted like sushi rice, so I was really digging it, but that, that, that will be third. And then, so we have one, two, two, three, all the way down here is the stuffed egg, eggplant, stuffed artichoke, because the impossible meat was fine. It was good. Not as good as the kefta or the meatloaf, but like it was impossible meat. It was good. But the artichoke itself, not that, not that. It was fine. The sauce on it wasn't the biggest fan of. The celery root puree, I couldn't even finish, and I like hate not having an empty plate. I don't know why. It's just me. I just love finishing my food. <laughs> so the fact that I had to like throw most of that away was pretty rough. And then what else did that even come with? Say, oh, more of the garlic roasted broccoli, but that was supposed to come with something else. So that one is not, uh, not so hot. So I guess it would be meatloaf, 10 out of 10, kefta, 9.5 out of 10, because the quinoa was just like, okay. Seitan piccata, 9 out of 10, because the peas weren't that great. And then tofu would be a 8.5 out of 10, just because it was a little more basic, but it was still very, 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 very good. That's a really hot, like a 8.8, 8.8 8. 8. 8 out of 10. And then the stuffed artichoke meal, give that one like a 4 out of 10, if I'm being honest. But that's it. That's all five of the dinners that Beyond Sushi blessed me with this week. And it was a great welcome back to New York and the vegan food scene out here. I'm gonna try and do more, oh, I'm going to do more vegan foodie videos now that I'm back in New York. I'm really enjoying these sleeves. They're not sleeves, it's a blanket, but I'm enjoying them anyways. I look like a bat. Yes. <laughs> I like vegan food, so there's going to be a lot. More. I like food in general. Why do I, have to, I don't have to call it vegan food. I like food, and so there's going to be a lot more food videos coming up soon. Very soon for you. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you ever come to New York, go to Beyond Sushi. You will thank me. You will not regret it. I promise you. Just don't get the stuffed artichoke get everything else and you'll be fine and that is it I will see you later thanks for watching Boop.